Hey, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm doing a roll review of Kodak's 200T color negative film for Super 8. There's a lot of mixed opinions about Super 8, but of course here on the channel, as probably a lot of you know, I really, really like Super 8. I think it's a fun little format. It is super expensive, but it's an interesting format because of the limitations of it and exactly all the things that you can kind of do with it if you're creative. So Super 8 comes in the plastic cartridges. Each cartridge contains 50 feet of film. There is Kodak 50D, which is a 50 ISO daylight balance color negative stock. Kodak 200T, which is a 200 ISO tungsten balance color negative stock. And Kodak 500T, which is a 500 ISO tungsten balance color negative stock. They also make Ektachrome, which is a color reversal film stock for Super 8, which means you can project it because it goes through a different process and comes back as a positive. And they also make Tri-X, which is a black and white reversal stock and also comes back as a positive, which means that you can project it. Color negative film stocks for Super 8 are not the types of films that you want to shoot if you want something that you can project when you get it back from the lab. The color negative stuff is the stuff that you want to shoot with the understanding that you will be sending it to a lab and it will be developed and then it will be digitally transferred so then you can watch it once you have it back. You can get reversal stuff like Ektachrome and Tri-X, you can get that stuff scanned as well, but it can also be projected if you have a projector. Everything can be scanned, it doesn't matter. So 200 ISO of this stuff puts it right in the middle of the color negative stocks that Kodak offers. 50 ISO on one side and 500 ISO on the other. 200 is right in the middle, which means that it offers like the medium ground for grain and also medium flexibility for like shooting conditions. It is Kodak Vision 3 color negative film 200 ISO tungsten balanced, which means that the film is naturally white balanced to be used under tungsten indoor lighting. So if you wanna be able to shoot this stuff outside under daylight, then it requires the use of an 85 orange filter. The majority of old Super 8 cameras have a built-in orange filter. And hey, I made a video to explain that because it was a big, big point of confusion for a lot of people getting into the format, which is okay. So 200T is meant by default to be shot indoors under warmer tungsten lighting as opposed to outside in daylight, which is a cooler light source than indoor tungsten light. I can talk more about color temperature and like white balance on films and stuff like that in another video, but specifically for 200 ISO tungsten color negative Super 8 film, that's what you need to know. So I shot this roll a little bit in this Nikon R10 camera and a little bit in this Yashica Electro 800 camera. I've also made a video about swapping cartridges in the middle of a roll for Super 8 as well, because you can do it and it is not something that you need to be super worried about. So I will upload the entire scan of the film over to the Patreon, but here we're just gonna take a look at some examples of it and compare it to a couple of the other Super 8 stocks out there as well. So uh, check it out. 200T gives you a medium amount of grain for a Super 8 film, and it's pretty flexible because it is a negative film stock. It's not going to be super saturated or contrasty either because it's a negative, so it's easy to work with, and in general, negative stocks are best if you're using a camera for the first time or relying on the auto exposure function of an old Super 8 camera. Different qualities of Super 8 cameras will handle the film differently. The Nikon has a great lens and a really good auto exposure function on it. The exposure on this stuff, which was shot in the Nikon, looks really spot on. And if we compare it against a cheaper camera like the Yashica, which is still a good camera, we see that the exposure isn't quite as precise. These are both on the auto functions, and if you have cameras with a manual setting, then you can also use a light meter and set your own aperture on the lens. So just looking at the two, that's why I've got some overexposure on the Yashica footage, whereas the Nikon stuff looks just like a little tighter. So all of this outdoor footage was shot with the internal orange filter in place, which converted the white balance of the film from tungsten to daylight. 200 ISO indoors still needs good light. And for this, I shot just using an LED light on top of my Nikon and blasted it right into my friend's face. In the past, you used to be able to get really bright Super 8 camera lights for indoor shooting. But a really good modern alternative that I found for this 
can be just a small LED light like this one. The grain on this is more noticeable than 50D, but it is still smaller than 500T. So I always do recommend shooting 50D when you can because the finer grain of it gives it a great look. It's a great film stock. But of course, the higher ISO of 200 can be more useful. Also, when you have the filter in place, then it changes the ISO of the film slightly because you're losing some light through that filter. So outside, it is only a 125 ISO film, whereas indoors with no filter, it is a straight up 200 ISO film. I also shot some 200T with the Pro 814 camera from Pro 8, which there is information in the description about that and there is a video for that. I just shot some basic exposure tests using the manual function on that camera, and we can see that the film has some great flexibility for what it can handle with exposure. So using 200T outside with the filter in place gives you a daylight film for Super 8 that is much more flexible than 50D is. So if you're shooting in overcast situations or you just want more flexibility, then this is a good choice for using as an outdoor film. 500T is still best for like really low light indoor situations. The film still has limits, but if you're indoors with like low light, then 500T is what you're gonna wanna go with. But if you're indoors with maybe like a studio setup or just a really, really well lit room and you're looking to not have like such a high grain that comes with 500T, then 200T will get you a good image with good grain. Kodak only makes 50D, 200T, and 500T for Super 8. But in 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter motion picture formats, they also make a 250 ISO daylight film. So 50, 200, 250, and 500. But that 250 ISO stock is not available from Kodak in Super 8, which is too bad because it offers you a straight up 250 ISO option for shooting outdoors without a filter in place. However, Pro 8 themselves does take the 250D stuff, cut it down and put it into the Super 8 cartridges. They offer that when Kodak themselves does not. So if you're looking for 250 ISO daylight in Super 8, then Pro 8 is the resource for that. 200T is a good film, but I personally do tend to forget about it because it's easier to think that like 50D is good for like lots of light, 500T is good for low light, but 200T is a really good middle ground and can really serve for like a lot of situations. Now, when you buy a cartridge of Super 8, it looks like this. I have shown it off in a lot of videos, talked about like loading it and exactly like how it works and everything. After you are done shooting it, you can safely remove it in the light. All the film is sealed inside this plastic cartridge. And then you have to either develop it yourself, which some people do, it can also be very difficult, but it is a possibility. And then it needs to be transferred, like digitally scanned, which also is very, very hard to do at home for a budget. A lot of people ask me about it. At some point, I will try and take a look at the Wolverine Super 8 scanner, which is one of the only like uh, budget options for scanning motion picture Super 8 stuff at home. but. It needs to be chemically developed in order for you to get your finished film. Once your film is back from the lab, it will probably look like this. This is the developed film, 50 feet of it on a reel. So when you initially buy it, it comes in a cartridge. Once it's been properly processed, then it is safe to see in the light, of course, like all other film, and it will probably be on a little plastic reel. All this extra information is stuff that I've talked about again in other videos, but of course some people are just coming into this and there is a bit of mystery around Super 8. This footage also that I showed off for the 200T was shot at a frame rate of 18 frames per second, which means that I got three and a half minutes worth of footage on that roll of film. It will change slightly depending on what frame rate you use when you're shooting your footage in your camera. Some cameras have the much more common frame rate of 24, which means that you only get about two minutes and 40 seconds of footage from your roll. 18 frames per second is what most cameras default to if they don't have other options on them, and is also what Super 8 projectors run at. So 200T is a good option, and it is worth considering if you're shooting in mixed lighting or you just want that little bit of more flexibility, especially as just using it as an outdoor film. And of course, um, I love Super 8. So uh, just having like a few different options 
is really, really important for like a little more flexibility with like a, a restricting format. Uh, the Nikon R10 is a beautiful Nikon uh, Super 8 camera. I love it a lot and it is one of my favorites. I can also do a video specifically on this camera, hopefully this year sometime as budget allows. But the Yashica Electro 800, um, and I also previously had a Yashica LD6, are also some decent, like uh, cheaper, more budget kind of cameras that are easily, uh, you can pick them up for way less than the Nikon R10. Thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out. There's information in the description down below about the Analog Resurgence Patreon and PO Box, but also for Niagara Custom Lab here in Toronto, which is where I got this specific role of Super 8 film done. Also information for Pro 8 millimeter out in California, from whom I had the opportunity to use the Pro 814 camera and had the other 200 ISO exposure test stuff done by them as well. And of course, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all soon.